Welcome to the recap of Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, Swordsmith Village. Previously on Demon Slayer, Mozen invites all the upper rank demons to the Infinity Castle and berates them for being incompetent. He sent Gyako and Atengu to follow up on a lead to defeat the Demon Slayers. Meanwhile, Tanjiro recovers from their last battle, as well as the others. He heads to the Swordsmith Village to procure another sword. There, he meets other demon slayers including Takedo, Mitsuri, and even Jinya. Later, he goes on to meet a young swordsmith, Kotetsu, and trains with a mechanical doll, the Yorichi Type Zero. The story continues as Tanjiro and Kotetsu watch as the head of the Yorichi Type Zero breaks away after landing a blow and reveals a 300-year-old sword in the doll. The two become ecstatic at finding such a weapon and Kotetsu offers Tanjiro to take it since the latter doesn't have a sword yet. Tanjiro declines to take the sword but the smith notes that Sengoku period steel is of noted high quality, adding that Tanjiro has earned the right to use it. They playfully argue back and forth until they both eagerly unsheathe the blade but quickly become disappointed to see the sword severely rusted. Kotetsu apologizes to Tanjiro for raising his hopes, who meekly accepts with tears of disappointment in his eyes. Suddenly, loud footsteps shake the ground and they turn to see the buff Haganazuko walking toward them, stating that the sword should be left up to him. Tanjiro and Kotetsu try to pull it away from the older swordsmith, confused by his statement and believing it should be Kotetsu's, but Haganazuka continues to insist on taking it. Tanjiro asks Haganazuka where he's been, but the swordsmith does not answer him, eventually pulling the blade away by shoving the two to the ground. Then Kozo Kanamori joins them and pointed out Haganazuka's weak points by tickling his sides, which makes him exhausted and calm down for some time. With the eccentric swordsmith down, Kanamori talks to Tanjiro and explains that Ataru had secluded himself in the mountains to train, to make a blade that would not break for him, surprising Tanjiro. Kanamori goes on to explain to Tanjiro that Haganazuka is glad that Tanjiro believes in him making a sword as other demon slayers dislike him, which Kotetsu chalks up to poor social skills. Hataru then awakens and declares that he will polish the rusty blade, to which Kotetsu notes that he could have said so in the beginning, causing the muscular smith to angrily grab him. Tanjiro and Kanamori quickly tickle him into exhaustion to save the boy. Before leaving, Haganazuka gives Tanjiro a spare sword to use while he works on the 300-year-old sword, for which Tanjiro is thankful. At the village, Tanjiro talks about Haganazuka's techniques, which are quite dangerous, and his concerns to a very visibly annoyed Jinya who seats nearby. Jinya angrily says he doesn't care and for Tanjiro not to speak with him like a friend. Tanjiro is confused and Jinya reminds him of his broken arm after the final selection. But Tanjiro retorts that it was Jinya's fault for hitting a girl. While watching him speak, Tanjiro remembers that Jinya was missing a tooth, which he denies. Tanjiro pulls out the missing tooth as he had wanted to return it, disgusting Jinya into kicking him out of the room. In his quarters, while braiding Nezuko's hair in the style of Mitsuri's, he muses on Jinya's constant anger and believes it is because he is hungry. Meanwhile, a swordsmith was leaving the hot springs and finds an ornate vase on the steps. As he reached for it, he was suddenly pulled and then spit out, his body horrifically mangled, but the smith was barely alive. Gyako emerges and rants about his dislike for the taste of swordsmiths. Having infiltrated the swordsmith village, he hopes that destroying it will cripple the demon slayer's weapons supply. At a rooftop, Hantengu, joining upper five in the village, remembers Mozen's anger at the meeting and decides that killing everyone in the village will please him. In the forests, Jinya enters the hut of his swordsmith. Though he sees it is empty, he sees his completed Nikarin sword. As Tanjiro sleeps, someone pinches his nose to wake him up and is revealed to be Takedo, asking for the whereabouts of Kanamori, his new swordsmith. Tanjiro mentions that he may be with Haganazuka and asks if he would like to go with him and search. The Hashira asks him why he cares so much about people, to which Tanjiro answers that helping people helps him feel good and believes they can go together. His answer unexpectedly stuns Takito and he asks for what he had said earlier. Nezuko then awakens and cheerfully moves about as Tanjiro asks if he would like to go. 
Looking at the young demon, Muchiro remarks that she is strange but cannot explain why. Suddenly, the two then hear someone outside their room. The door slides open and a tearful and anxious Antengu begins to crawl toward them. Tanjiro and Takito are frozen by his sudden presence but in one swift move, the Hashira unsheaths his blade and uses mist breathing, fourth form, shifting flow and slashes, but misses because Antengu is now on the ceiling with a small cut, begging them to stop tormenting him. Recovering from his shock, Tanjiro instantly uses his fire breathing in Akamikagura, Sunflower Thrust, yet he too fails to make contact with Antengu, now on the floor, he becomes more confused upon noticing the demon is not fighting back. Growing in size, Nezuko lands a powerful kick on the demon, slamming him into the wall, but Tanjiro warns her against using the form, as it will only cause her to transform into a full demon. With the demon stunned by the kick, Takito sees his chance and beheads Antengu. But Tanjiro remembers that a simple beheading is not enough for upper rank demons, and warns Takito to keep him alert. True to his warning, the demon's severed head grows a new body, while the headless body gains a new head and form. Tanjiro takes on the standing demon, while Takito attacks the one in front of him. But before he can reach it with his blade, the demon with a single swing of his leaf-shaped Uchiwa blasts the Mr. Shira away with a powerful gust of wind, destroying the room and forcing Nezuko to hold Tanjiro down from flying away as well. Karaku, the manifestation of pleasure, laughs at Takito flying away, while Sekido, the manifestation of anger, angrily rants at Karaku on having to be joined with him. As Tanjiro attempts an attack on the two, Sekido wields his staff and summons a burst of lightning, paralyzing the siblings in place. Tanjiro, about to lose consciousness, sees someone on the roof above them. Using a handheld double-barrel shotgun, Jinya fires Nikarin's steel shot at the demons, beheading Sekido but partially severing Karaku's neck. He runs down to finish the second demon off with his blade before Tanjiro tried to warn him that the demons want to be beheaded. Tanjiro realizes that beheading them will not kill them as they form new bodies and heal at a very fast rate. Seeing only three demons, he notices one is missing but is suddenly pulled up by the missing winged demon, Nezu Ko is unable to reach him in time. Tanjiro tells her to help Jinya instead who is already being impaled by a spear-wielding demon. The winged demon insults him for caring about others but himself and prepares to attack. Tanjiro attempts to use an Akamikagura but is hit by a powerful sonic shriek that causes him to bleed, only cutting the demon's leg holding him. Tanjiro falls to the forest below, attempting to grab a tree branch but fails and lands hard on the ground. As he urges himself to get up and save the village, he feels his body is now numb due to the attack. He cannot hear anything. Suddenly, he realizes that the demon's leg is still holding and turns to see a new head about to unleash the sonic strike once again. Having landed a long way from the village, Takito runs back but sees a fish-like demon attempting to eat Kotetsu. Seeing he is a child with no swordsmanship skills, he concludes that helping him is of low priority. Deducing that the demon is not the main body but one made with a technique, he decides he needs to find the main body. He also notes that when the village is attacked, the most important mission is protecting the chief and other important people as the demon grabs hold of Kotetsu. The Hashira then remembers Tanjiro's words about helping others eventually benefiting him. As the fish demon squeezes Kotetsu unconscious, its arm is sliced off and frees the young swordsmith of its hold. Takedo rushes in and takes a stance in front of Kotetsu, asking him to run away as he will only get in the way of his fighting. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to find out what happens in the next episode. Stay tuned.